I'm Dana Sosseger. After three decades in the marketing business and many years of being an entrepreneur, I've learned a thing or two about marketing. Join me as we talk about marketing, small business, and life in between. Welcome to My Weekly Marketing. Hey, hey, and welcome back to My Weekly Marketing, where we talk marketing strategy, small business, and life in between. I don't know about you, but if you're anything like me, I don't love getting on video. Anyone else? In fact, when I have to record a video of myself, it takes so much time because I end up doing so many takes and then I get frustrated and want to quit. However, I know that video is important in our marketing for lots of reasons. We can communicate so much more through video than we can with the written word because our brain can process images so much faster. Plus, we pick up nonverbals through video that we don't see in other media. All of this is to say that video is an important aspect of running a business, especially if you have a personal brand. So today's guest is a talented and creative videographer named Nibes Monroe. Nibes is not your average videographer. He's a filmmaker with a knack for telling a powerful story. Plus, he's way cooler than I am, which you could probably tell from a name like Nibes, right? So in today's episode, we'll dive into how to get started with video, where to use video in your business, and even how to produce it cost-effectively. Knives shares a lot of great tips he's learned from running his own video production company, Indie Darlings. So if you're just getting started with video, or if maybe you want to add a little polish to the video that you're already doing, stay tuned. Here's my chat with Knives Monroe. Well, hey, Knives, I am so glad to have you on my podcast today. Thank you so much for having me. What an honor. I'm so happy to be here. So before we jump right into your origin story, and this may lead to it, but first I want to ask you, why video? Like, why do you love video and why do you work in the video industry? So for me, it started with film, filmmaking, although I've never made anything on 35 millimeter film, but it started with my love of movies. Uh, I got bit by the bug in 2004. I wanted to make movies and and filmmaking was the only game in town. And so at 16 years old, I, I found a, a camera in a trash can, figured out how to make it work, started editing on two VCRs. Wow. You know, kids, if you don't know what a VCR is. <laughs> and I would create title cards on Microsoft Paint and film the computer and it was just whatever I could get my hands on. So video was the only thing I could get my hands on. Film was too expensive. So that's mm -hmm. why video instead of film. But filmmaking turned into content creation. Yeah. Yeah. That is the coolest story ever. You found a camera in the garbage can. I love that. And it worked. I mean, how often does that happen that you find a camera? You had to connect it to a television in order to see what you were recording. Mm -hmm. But you know, I think that's why they threw it away. But that was good enough for oh, me. Okay. Okay. Oh, that is cool. So you felt like you could go ahead and make a movie or you wanted to make movies and then it kind of led into a business that you currently have. Is that right? You know, I'm very lucky. Uh, I was alive at a time that was just very advantageous with the digital revolution. Um, in 2004, I was editing on videotape. But by 2005, YouTube existed. And I was editing on, on digital. Um, so I started putting stories together, montages together. But I didn't start making money with video until maybe 2013, almost 10 years later, and start a business almost 10 years later. Um, but I, I did hone my craft in telling stories, shooting and editing music videos for local talent, uh, transitioning into videography for weddings and quinceaneras and things of that nature but it was just an excuse to to paint with pictures it was just an excuse to to storytell that is that is really cool so now my listeners are are business owners how can they use that storytelling um activity to make videos for themselves like what stories should they be telling and how um how would they go about doing it is is it through like um, well, 
you answer that question. How, how would they go about starting out, like deciding what videos they should be making? Oh, gosh. So first, you have to really be self-aware and understand what business you're actually in. Are you in the restaurant industry? Are you in HVAC? You know, your listeners probably vary from industry to industry, vertical to vertical. But each and every single one of them, even plumbing services, need to tell their stories and tell videos. So I'll use the plumbing services as an example. Mm -hmm. I think off the top of my head, two types of videos come to mind. Number one, you're going to want to entertain as opposed to, I mean, you're going to want to educate as opposed to entertain. So educate people how they can fix a, a, a leak in their bathroom, make 10 videos about that. And so definitely come from an educational aspect, educational perspective, because people are going to be searching for this. And if they find you on the internet, they're going to trust you and they're, they're going to, they can convert to be a customer, which is really what this is about at the end of the day. Right. Uh, another video that you can make if you're in the plumbing industry is a client testimonial, right? So who have you served that had a terrific experience? Obviously, if you're in any industry, the client or customer experience is, is definitely important. So who's comfortable or charismatic enough or, or at least on the fringe for you to be able to enroll in a testimonial and turn that and flip that as a as a as proof so, social proof that your business is cooking mm -hmm. so those are two types of videos right there and that's for uh you know a plumbing company so hopefully mm -hmm. that eliminates the right parts of our brain for your listeners who are like, oh, I see, I see, I can actually apply that to my business as well, the testimonials and the educational aspect. But you have to be oh, very self aware. And I will say that as a video production company, I've had to educate myself on the strategy component for small businesses. I used to just push the record button and make videos for video's sake, but that's just not good business. And, mm -hmm. and honestly, um, I'm not going to be making a fortune doing that just because that's a, that's a commodity. People can outsource, and we can talk about this later if you'd like, but people can outsource video editing overseas for pennies on the dollar. So I had to really invest in video strategy and understand what are the client's pain points and how do they make money and how can we make them make more money through video marketing? So the strategy came into play and that came later on in my career, uh, very recently, uh, post pandemic, did I realize, oh, I have to be more than just a storyteller. I have to be a strategist. Oh, I love that you said that. I mean, what what I do with my clients is I, I, I pull them through what I call the trail to the sale. So we go from awareness to consider to compare, to evaluate, to sell, serve, supersize, and send. Those are the what I call the, the the trail stops, right? So, but it really follows that customer journey. And as we've talked about before, I think you can use video in in any of those. Um, it, anything from uh, the awareness stage, where you're just making a quick video introducing yourself on Instagram or TikTok, all the way through where you can do product demos, where you can talk about your referral program. I mean, there's so many different places that video can work, but you really do need to start with that strategy. So I'm so glad you brought that up because I, I think, and I think that really helps too, when you're, if you're thinking about trying to do a video, just asking yourself those questions, it's like, what are, what are my objectives here? Where do I need to use this? What is that customer's problem to begin with? So that you're answering those right questions. Absolutely. The trail to the sale. I like that. That's sort of like uh, what we call top of funnel, right? Getting right. people down the funnel and getting yes. people to convert and getting people to enroll and getting people to take action and to buy. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, we're, we're not just making video for video's sake. There's, there's, a, there's a method behind the madness for sure. There is. And the reason why I prefer the trail analogy, and we're going off on a little tangent here, is to a funnel is that you really have to move them along that funnel. It doesn't just, you don't fall into the funnel, or I'm sorry, you have to move them along the trail. They don't fall into a funnel and just sort of happen to 
become a customer. You have to work at every step of the trail or every step of the way to move them to that next stage to nurture that that relationship and and turn a you know a Googler into a customer. So um and I love that you also brought up storytelling because that is so, so powerful, even just introducing you, yourself. And it becomes, you know, a person can become memorable through a video, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So I think there's so many different things that you touch on there that are that are golden. So how do you decide whether you should go long form, short form? Do you have a, a process that you work with clients on that helps them figure out exactly what they should be working on next? Hey friend, if you've been listening to this podcast for a bit, you know that I put my heart and soul into producing it each week so you can get the most value from it. So I'm completely honored and thrilled to have been nominated for the Women in Podcasting Award. But here's the thing, I need your vote. Would you consider voting for me? Just go to myweeklymarketing.com forward slash vote and you can cast your vote there. I would be eternally grateful Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Absolutely. So it's a case-by-case basis. However, um, one thing that's paramount to a lot of business owners are the, what we call vanity metrics or the optics, the views, Mm -hmm. the engagement. People are really concerned, business owners, even though it's not as important as they think it is about the the amount of followers that that they have. But for those that you know, they're the ones that that pay the bills at the end of the day, if you want to check those boxes and really determine what's better, short form or vi- or or long form, right, right now it's short form like across the board ubiquitously. Short form video, YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, TikToks, mm-hmm. even Facebook reels. Video is becoming huge on LinkedIn and LinkedIn is a tremendous place to do business. You can't talk about video and video strategy without talking about the platforms that you're going to distribute on. And there needs to be a strategy behind that as well. And right now, short form video is white hot. So mm-hmm. if any of your listeners are wondering, okay, what's what's like the current trend? I know I need to be making videos, short form videos. And the good news is if you have one of these, you can get started today. You can take out your cell phone. It doesn't matter if it's an Android, if it's a Pixel, or if it's an iPhone. And you can pause this podcast. And if you're inspired, say something that is valuable and transmit it on the internet. And then that's it. That, mm-hmm. that's, that's good enough. That is how you scale the trail to the sale is by getting in front of as many eyeballs as you possibly can through video distribution, right? So right now, short form video is white hot. Mm -hmm. If you have a customer testimonial, do both. Do a four minute version of the testimonial, but have an editor trim the 45 second version of it as well. The, the, The answer, I'm very big on quantity enabling quality. Let's do both. I film Mm -hmm. horizontal but I also crop in vertically and that's the the content that sees the light of day. And then you have the long form archival content that goes on YouTube, which is great for SEO and Google search. YouTube is the second largest search platform in the world behind Google. So people are searching for videos as well. Um, and that's where long, ter- long form really works. Um, but you know, on TikTok. Long form video is very successful as well. It's vertical, but it's long form and people are engaged and they watch 50 part series of stories happening on TikTok. So um, it, between short form and long form today, August 1st of this recording, 2024, short form video is the way to go. Mm, I love that. One of the things you said, though, that I really, really like video for is that it can be cut down into, I mean, you can, you can shoot a really long video and you can, and cut it up into mini videos and use it on social media. You're right. The horizontal versus vertical format is kind of a, a hard thing to navigate 
you know, sometimes. So, cause you don't, you'll either shoot one or the other, at least I do. Um, so is there a way to, what would you, what do you think is better? Like, so is it better to shoot long form horizontally and then just crop it in for, for video, for social media? Two part answer to that question. First part, and I promise I won't go on long about this is here's a, here's a hack for those that have the money to afford this film in 6k and it's a very tall image and you can crop in and, and not lose any resolution. It's beautiful. It's glorious. So okay. you can film horizontal and you can make all the vertical videos and edits that you want and have both subjects in frame and it's tremendous. Um, or the second option, the second answer is whatever is native to the platform. Instagram Reels is vertical. So if you're gonna if this is gonna be distributed to Instagram Reels, it has to be vertical, right? And you can get away mm-hmm. with horizontal images, compositions through the vertical how people consume content on their mobile device. So you can you can get away with it, but to optimize it, if people want that full bandwidth image, they want so so film vertically. So it's all about natively to the platform contextually case-by-case basis like what is the story that i'm telling right now where is it going to be distributed you have to ask yourself that first before you decide on an aspect ratio gotcha so where do you start now you said you can just pick up pause the podcast pick up a phone and make a video do you script it out do you feel like can you tell when something's scripted out do you like when you're working with let's say you're doing a longer form video, maybe for uh, a company and you're talking to the founder and you're getting maybe a video that you're going to use, they're going to use on their homepage or the website, for example. Do you recommend that they use a script for something like that or just have some bullet points or how do you approach that sort of scenario? That's a tremendous question. It really depends on who has the final cut of these videos. Um, If you're hiring a video production company work together with the producer and director of what you're going to what the format's going to look like they can mock up what that final product will look like and they'll have a ballpark of what that final composition will look like Uh, they'll they'll inform you what questions are going to be asked for interviews you know what's a good establishing shot do they do they need a drone if if you're in an industrial maintenance right mm. um or is this going to be at nighttime daytime inside outside what's the sound like do you, or do you is your building next to railroad tracks or is it under a freeway is it next to a, a an airport right all these factors matter um i think there are people who are really charismatic and can wing it like you and I. And then there are people that need to be heavily scripted and, and maybe even need a teleprompter as well, which mm-hmm. I'm fortunate mm-hmm. enough to have. And they're they're virtually inexpensive nowadays. And there are tremendous free teleprompters. If you're filming on your telephone, I recommend the app CapCut, which is free. You can mm-hmm. pay for it and unlock it and get a bunch of bonus features. But there's a teleprompter feature which is really cool. And so people don't even notice it. And that's what a lot of influencers on Instagram use. When they're doing a product placement or what have you, they use a teleprompter. So they write a script out. I love scripting things out. Um, But it really depends on the subject. It's case by case. Some people are really charismatic and they can wing it and they're just magic in front of the camera. But that's not most people. So most people do need an outline, a blueprint, a beat sheet. They need a, a script that they can follow. Sometimes it's recording five seconds at a time and getting that segment five seconds at a time. And it's you, you got to hold their hand and that's the way it is sometimes. But with clever editing, you mask that and make them look like a million dollars. So it, it's, it's a case by case basis for my personal stuff. I do script things out. I, I, I used to be a wing it mm-hmm. kind of guy, but you know, now the science of this art form has just advanced so much and it's so competitive the first three seconds of your video really matters. And then the three seconds after Mm -hmm. that really matters. So writing a clever hook, writing a clever, uh, which is another way of saying like an interesting first three seconds or opening uh, really matters. So uh, every now and then, uh, if I'm in the shower, if I'm going for a walk, I get an idea for a hook, I write it down because I know that's the way I'll open a video. So I'm always ideating, writing things down. I have an idea bank as well. 
mm-hmm. of just nothing but hooks or nothing but mm. titles, like headlines for YouTube videos, catchy titles, catchy thumbnails, uh, a seductive or primal uh, thumbnail that will really grab people's attention or a data point of, did you know the more members of family you have in your house, there's an, there's an increase of an infant death rate. You know, how do I put that into four words and make that captivating um, to sell more houses or to sell more space or real estate or what have you? So I'm constantly ideating and writing things down for myself personally. I do believe in and scripting. And I just to add as much value as I possibly can here, if you're wondering, um, oh, you know, I'm too busy to be scripting. How do I do that? Fortunately, there are tremendous free tools such as Chat GPT. Mm-hmm. where you can generate um, scripts that are pretty good. They get you at the very least to third base, and then you can walk it all the way home to use a baseball analogy. And so there are tremendous free softwares that you can download on your phone and use while you're indisposed and or you're in your hot tub, and you can generate scripts on demand today, which is mm-hmm. incredible. I, I couldn't have said that two years ago. Yeah. Personally, I love ChatGPT. I I do personalize everything and I definitely look it over, but it really has saved me a lot of time. And doing something like, like I don't I don't think I've used it for scripts, but I, I definitely use it for uh, email copy, for example, or any kind of text that I'm writing. Because sometimes you just stare at the screen and, you know, it's 4.30 in the afternoon, you got nothing left, you know? So it really comes in handy. I love that you have a bank of hooks. I love that. That that Absolutely. that's brilliant. Yeah. And I think w- what you're saying too is has so much impact, you know, that those first 3 seconds you have to stop the scroll and you have to make them listen and and you may have the best content in the world, but if you don't stop them, they'll never know that. And I think Instagram too, the first I forget the 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 number here, but the first few minutes that it's up there, they're looking at how much engagement's getting. It's getting, and that's going to affect your overall uh, how well that post does overall. And so, if you've got a hook that you're just going to put out there on video, it's going to and it's going to work. Then, then yeah, put put all you got into that first into that hook in into those first few seconds. Love it. So you talked about metrics a little bit ago. Um, what metrics? Now, there's vanity metrics, right? That would be likes and shares. But what metrics should I track to evaluate how well a video does? For YouTube, you're going to want to look at your click-through rate, the CTR. How many people are clicking on this thumbnail, on this video title, on this video? Did, did it work? It, you know, That's number one. Look at that metric because maybe your thumbnails are just screen grabs and there's no text on it and it's not a polished thumbnail. We live in a time now where they need to be polished and they need to be curated and really optimized. So the click-through rate is a very important uh, metric. The other would be your um, retention. How many people fall off after the first 30 seconds on YouTube long form? Mm -hmm. That would be the equivalent of TikTok or Instagram or LinkedIn. How many people fall off and swipe away after the first three seconds. So the the retention matters. If you can get people staying to the end of your video, you're going to make a lot of money in this business. I love that. That's really interesting. Um, yeah, I, I would agree with that. And and it really is surprising to me. Um, I, I used to work with somebody who was great on video. I mean, he would just go off the cuff and he made it interesting and um, really engaging. But looking at where people dropped off was really sobering. I mean, it was, um, you could tell that maybe it wasn't titled correctly. Maybe it was an SEO issue that people found it in the first place. And maybe it was um, maybe a little misleading in terms of the title. So those are all things to think about too, because you want to make sure, yes, you want your um, the, the search engines to uh send you the right people, right? So that they're interested in it. But that really makes a big impact. I, I'm glad you brought that up. For a YouTube long form video, if you're promising something in the title, 
you need to deliver on that promise in the first second. Mm. But simultaneously open a curiosity gap that will make people stay later towards the middle half of your video and towards the end of your video. So you, you can't say, um, I spent $100 on a milkshake and then start the video and we're not talking about the milkshake. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You need to show me drink. You're drinking that. Uh, show me the receipt and show me the transaction. And you're drinking that milkshake within the first minute and uh, within the first second. And then we, you can tell me how you how we got there and where we're going. Um, but I think there's a lot of just those little simple tweaks can really make the difference between a hundred views or tens of thousands of views. Yeah. In fact, I just talked about this in my newsletter this week. It was it was just. Uh, making sure that that headline really keeps people going too. So instead of saying, um, here's why your dog should not eat grapes, um, a better headline, maybe here's the food that you're the one food that your dog should never eat or something like that. You know, so it, so you talked about that curiosity gap. Um, That's really starts right away when you're thinking about the video and how you're, planning it out right because you said you got to get to it absolutely right away and then but you want to leave the the punchline to the end because if you tell them it's grapes you know halfway through they've got nothing to stick around for unless you introduce another hook in there so i love that advice very very strong um so let's say i am shooting my own videos do you have some tools now you mentioned cap cut is that your favorite editing tool i it's it's kind of it's kind of limited right or can you do quite a bit on it i've used a little bit i cannot believe what you're able to do on this app that's essentially for free if you live in the states i cannot believe what they give away for free i mean it's it's robust okay also, Notion is a where I do my project management system. So everything, my second brain lives on Notion, also free. CabCut, also free. ChatGPT, also free. Um, these are incredible tools. Uh, I would also like to highlight Spark Camera, which is really underrated. It's, it's this bottom one right here mm. with the red circle. Mm-hmm. Why I think it's tremendous is because you can stitch recording in the app and then export it and then put watermark free it's free by the way and then you can export your stitched edited footage and and upload it directly to tiktok linkedin facebook what have you so why is that important if i'm shooting and editing a video on tiktok and i export it it's going to have a tiktok watermark if i edit a video in instagram i can't take that video and put it on tiktok so Spark camera is free and it's really tremendous because you can essentially edit in camera, which is just, I can't believe we can do all this on our device. Like, uh, I hope, I hope those listening, if they're listening to a podcast, something tells me that they're semi tech savvy. So these apps are available for, for free. There are paid versions to unlock more premium sort of features, but, um, those are, those are tremendous, but I'm old fashioned give me a pen and a notebook and I can do some damage. Hmm. Interesting. So you don't feel like it's necessary to maybe get Adobe, what is Adobe Premiere Pro or anything like that, that it, cause those can be very complicated. Adobe can get really complex pretty fast. So I was just curious whether or not, um, you feel like, um, cause honestly I do a lot of video editing with, uh, iMovie, <laughs> iMovie <laughs> which, is, which is pretty rudimentary, but it, it, it does, it does the job, which is typically edit out a chunk here, put in a title screen. That's pretty much all I do for video editing. Otherwise, I send it to a, someone more professional. But um, yeah, so which I think is also free for for uh, uh, Apple. That's right. It know. is. Right. It, it is free. Like it, it comes with, uh, with your phone and with your MacBooks if you have one. Okay. Okay, cool. That's a tremendous piece of software, iMovie. I never got on it. I went straight and I bought in 2011 Final Cut Pro, never paid for it mm-hmm. again. Bought it one time. Adobe Premiere, which I also use for work, um, you have to pay every month. And that's kind of yeah. a bummer. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And and I mean, I have the whole Creative Suite, which I use anyway with Illustrator and Photoshop and some of the others. So for me, it's just, 
it's a bonus because I'm always paying for the other things. But you, what you're, I love what you said that it's not necessary. You can do a, an adequate job of, of editing without spending a lot of money on yes. the software. I, I want to highlight here, and I wanted to start with this actually, is we live in an age where authenticity really matters. And so the less polished, the better for these up and coming buyers, depending on your business, Gen Z's, my, my son's 18 years old, he's out in the marketplace, he's buying stuff. And he's more likely to respond to someone on their phone, putting their makeup on, or putting down the barbells and talking to the camera, and just being themselves than he is the highly polished, super produ uh, produced video that just looks like it's selling something to you right out the gate. It's not even trying to be human with you mm -hmm. um, or authentic, mm -hmm. the better. And so something yeah. like a cap cut with your phone out the gate, there's auto captions. You don't even have to, you don't even have, to. I used to write captions by hand just a few years ago and now it's, it's automated. Um, platforms in, in tech like this just really turns us into superheroes, I feel. There's more computational power in the phone than there was that took us to the moon in the 60s. So I know, it's crazy, it's, right? It's just, it's just nuts what we have. And with great power comes great responsibility. So, yes, yeah, so I'm always trying to find um, the, the most cutting edge technology that saves me time, gives me my time back, and uh, just makes my products even better, my finished products. Mm. So do you feel like it's necessary like to add music, which you can do in Instagram? Um, this is all a matter of taste. It's not binary. Yeah. It's not music makes it better. That's objective. It's subjective mm -hmm. to answer that question. I did not mean to cut you off, but no, no. these little differences um, are just aesthetics. They're not going to transform your business overnight if you use music or not. I'm not trying to be glib. It's just some people really hang on these minute details. And mm -hmm. truthfully, you know, post three to 10 times a day. And then tomorrow, not everyone that is going to see that content that you uploaded the next day. So you have to mm -hmm. up for the next crop of people. And it's, it's, it's just about consistency and volume and value. If you think of a Venn diagram between consistency, volume, and value. And if you can just master that, I mean, you can grow any business with that. Mm -hmm. I will add one more Venn or circle to that Venn diagram though, and that would be emotion. Um, I, I just know that on social media, speaking strictly about social media, that adding some emotional appeal, the, the, the people that seem to do viral videos have either humor or it just hits you in a certain way. And that's kind of why I asked about music too, because that really has an emotional element to it. And people buy an emotion too. So um, mm. so I probably put another circle in that, but you're absolutely right about those three. Because if you're not consistent, if you're not um, you, you know, doing all the other things correctly, that just having emotion isn't going to move the needle for you. It's got to be everything kind of working together. I love that. So, um, where can people find out more about you? They can find me at knivesmonroe.com. Um, I have a, a little freebie I'd like to promote. It's called the content effort scale. It's a free downloadable PDF and it's my framework for producing and maximizing and optimizing content. So if I may, um, this podcast is perfect for the content effort scale. What we're going to be able to do is it's essentially a checklist. We have a podcast. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh, can we make a short form video out of it? Yes, mm -hmm. we can. Can we make a, a, tw a tweet or a thread from the copy? Absolutely. Can we create a LinkedIn art from the copy, from the transcription? Absolutely. Can we make a blog? or an email newsletter out of the podcast. Absolutely. Um, there needs to be a, an Instagram story, uh, a pre-call to action, a post-call to action. Can we create a thumbnail from this podcast as well? 
Uh, the description copy that goes for SEO on YouTube, well, how, you know, can we take that from the transcription? So it's really about how do we take one piece of content and transform it into 30 just from one and really maximizing the effort of one piece of content. So that's the content effort scale. It's simply a downloadable PDF checklist. And it's a way to hold yourself accountable of creating and maximizing your effort uh, when it comes to creating content. And it's a, it's, a, it's a simple framework and roadmap for those that don't know what to make. Make a pillar piece of content, content like a podcast or a newsletter, which you, you have both, and uh, and really chop those up and distribute them um, and post them across multiple platforms. And it really just came from one. Mm. So maximize your effort. That's what I would say. And you can find me on knivesmonroe.com. Oh, I love that. I Because I do. I don't do enough of that. I mean, I know for sure that it's so easy to jump into a production mindset that you're not utilizing the effort that you already put into something and you can certainly reuse it in, in different, in different ways. So yes, I love that. Is there, um, yes, I'll put a note to that. I'll, I'll put a link to that in my show notes. So anyway, oh, thank, thank you. you so much, Knives. I appreciate you taking the time to be with us this evening and I look forward to getting my download. So what'd you think? Some good tips, right? To learn more about anything we talked about today, visit our show notes page at myweeklymarketing.com forward slash 70. That's seven zero. As always, if you liked what you heard, I would so appreciate a review on Apple Podcasts. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hope to see you next time. Bye for now.